Today, our special guest is Greek-American Rhode Island Senator Leonidas Reptakis, presiding over District 33. Reptakis has served as a state senator since 1996 and regained his seat in 2013. Over the years, he has been a consistently strong voice for the Hellenic community on a wide range of international issues. Good morning, Senator. Thank you so much for being here with us in our studios in New York. It's my pleasure being here today. Well, I, you are no-nonsense legislator. And before we go into uh, what you've done in your seat, uh, I would love to talk about your background because your character comes from the home, that's what they say. Uh, and you're, you have a wonderful, strong personality. You're known for your integrity. Tell me a little bit about your background. That's the first question people ask me, where and what part of Greece are you from? Both my parents were born and raised on the island of Andros. My father came to the United States in 1940 while working on a Greek ocean liner, the Nealas of the Greek line, while they were crossing the Atlantic late October 1940 into early November 1940. That is when Italy declared war and invaded Greece. The ship had arrived in New York and was repossessed by the British. He came down the gangplank, asked for political asylum, and started working in the United States as a blacksmith, as a musician. And when the U.S. entered World War II, he got drafted into the U.S. Army, he served in the U.S. Army from 1942 to the end of uh, July 1945, early August 1945. He went back to Greece and so in 1958, married my mother, brought her back to the U.S., to Rhode Island, and I was born in the United States along with my brother. Well, that's wonderful. That's an amazing story. And you do a lot for the Hellenic community. How many Greeks are there in uh, Rhode Island? Rhode Island has a small community. We are around 8,000 in total population. Three Greek churches, one in uh, Cranston, one in Newport, one in Pawtucket. But the New England area, which comprises of the Boston uh, Diocese, there's about a, about 125 to maybe 150,000 uh, Greek Americans, about 63 churches that belong to the uh, Boston metropolis. But Rhode Island, we consider a little stepson of the Boston uh, area, but we're, we're, we're a vibrant community. You are, and I, you do speak a little Greek. I know a lot of, of the Fluently. New Englanders don't, but yes. you do, yes. and that's wonderful because I heard you speaking uh, in Greek before, and it was very good. Um, do you teach, did you pass that down to your children? Do they speak Greek? Well, that, the second generation is a little more difficult uh, because uh, I, I did not have the luxury of being in a community where there was a lot of uh, Greek uh, language schools or the opportunity. It, very difficult to drive to the church. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's sad because I'm afraid that that's what's happening, and not only in the Greek community, in other communities, where if your parents or your gr uh, grandparents are strictly coming straight from Greece, you learn that language because it's spoken in the household on a daily basis. Right. Uh, today, it's... it's Second generation is, exactly. is just not doing it. Yeah. But the good thing is that both my children love to go to Greece, and uh, we're planning to go to Greece this coming summer. We try to get them to Greece every other year, which hopefully they'll they'll start that initiative of, of learning the language. I think that's what it is. We need to discover our roots. We need to bring the kids to Greece, and they can discover the roots, get the Greek uh, bug in them, as we call it. Exactly. And you're doing the right thing, and that's so wonderful. And you do a lot of great things for your um state. How did you get involved in politics? Because you're a very successful businessman. Well, through the restaurant business, like almost uh, the, 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 the story, the, the basic uh, starting story, I was going through college and uh, while in college my uh, dad opened up a uh, business that we had owned the building and we started Venus Pizza Food and Spirits, which we've been in business for 35 years. That was in 1979 while I was attending uh, Rhode Island College. And then in around 1992, we had the banking crisis hit Rhode Island. And as a small business owner, uh, we've had high taxes, high business regulation. And uh, I used to complain a lot all the time. So a friend of mine came into the restaurant who was a state legislator. says, you know what? Don't complain. You're a leader in the community. Uh, run for office. And I decided to run for state representative in 1992. Didn't know anything about politics. The only thing I knew about politics was John F. Kennedy. And I you got 62% of the vote. Well, I ran in the Democratic <laughs> primary against the machine, and we defeated the, the candidate from the Democratic Party, 62 percent. Congratulations. And in, the, in November election, it was a Republican candidate, which we defeated around 59 percent. No opposition in 1994 because of working hard in the General Assembly. I ran for state Senate in 1996, unseated the 12-year incumbent, again by a wide uh, margin. And uh, we continued on with a lot of the years unopposed. From 2002, when they redistricted, the districts became smaller. We went from 50 state senators down to 38. I ran for 
that new district won handily against both the Democratic opponent and the Republican. Had no race, nine, 2004, 2006, 2008, uh, no opposition. And then in 2010, I decided to jump one step up. Regrettably, we didn't have the machine support, the party support. We did it on our own, grassroots support. Many Greek Americans here in, in, in New York supported us. And uh, we came a little bit short. Uh, people complained why I did that, why I left the state Senate. And I decided to run in 2012. Not only did we defeat the machine candidate, again, by a wide percentage of close to 63%, we unseated the Republican that took over my seat by the same margin. So we're a very uh, popular individual in Rhode Island because we speak from the heart. We speak of what is right for the, for, the, for the people of our district, what is right for the people of Rhode Island. And in today, in the Journal Bulletin, we were ranked number one as far as fiscal stability. A yeah, you guys card. need, Rhode Island needs fiscal stability due exactly. to the unemployment rate. Tell us a little bit about that. That hit the news uh, today. Uh, there's a uh, think tank group, uh, Freedom Prosperity, and they what they do is they monitor all our votes regarding uh, taxation and many fiscal policies to try to get the state back on its feet. And my ranking, I voted uh, accordingly to good policies, good staple policies, not, not policies decreasing business circulation, try to create more jobs in the state. And those uh, votes uh, against 38 studios, we have a debacle with 38 studios in Rhode Island, where we gave away $75 million economic development to Kurt Schilling and his group to try to create this, uh, th these, these uh, films, and they were unsuccessful. His company collapsed, taxpayers are footing the bill. I rose against that uh, issue back in uh, last year's budget. And uh, I really feel that we have still a lot of work to do in Rhode Island. Well, you're doing a lot. Though. I mean, you authored a major crime bill that uh, keeps prisoners in longer. Yes. Uh, you know, you're, you've increased the time convicted for murders, uh, crafted the state's first anti-car jacking law. Uh, you've done a lot of wonderful things. You, you closed loopholes in the state's uh, drunk driving laws. Um, what is uh, Rhode Island's biggest hurdle? The problem today is we don't have Silicon Valley in our state. We are an old manufacturing state where we created manufacturing in the turn of the century. Uh, even prior, I should say even earlier than that, during the 17 and 1800s when this country was starting its uh, manufacturing revolution. And what's happening over the years, we did not catch up to Massachusetts or Connecticut. And that's the problem we're facing. We had uh, a huge defense uh, Newport Naval Base that closed down in 1973. And what we're trying to do is retool the state right now with General Dynamics, uh, building submarines. The state just won, oh, General Dynamics won a $17 billion contract to build 10 nuclear powered submarines in the next 10 years. So hopefully that's going to bring back uh, employment. We're looking at high tech. We have some good universities, Brown University, University of Rhode Island. So we're trying to create new jobs of the future, and it is a lot of work. The most important thing is make Rhode Island business friendly. As a small business owner, we're trying to cut back on red tape, right. trying to reduce the corporate tax, trying to you reduce have the burden. incentives for small businesses? Uh, it, it very, very difficult. And uh, we've been very successful getting rid of some of the permits and fees and licenses. If I rolled out my, all the licenses I got to pay in my business, I'd go from here to the other side of the oh, room. No. And that's one of the, people remember that. When Raptakis walks in the room, we talk about business, they remember the 14 or 15 different business permits that we need just to turn the key in our small all business. business. That's ridiculous, yeah. It's well, absolutely You're doing ridiculous. a lot of wonderful things for your state, and I'm sure all the uh, citizens are very happy. Uh, and uh, you're doing a lot for Greece. Uh, you are part of the WHIA, which is a World Hellenic Interparliamentary Association. It's an initiative of the Greek Parliament. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, that initiative was created by the Greek Parliament as a whole from all political parties in 1996 to have a uh, good relationship and a collaboration to exchange ideas with every Greek legislator elected outside of Greece and Cyprus. The majority of those legislators come from here from the United States, Australia and Canada. And we try to meet in Greece every two years, the, the whole body, as many of us that can make it to Greece. And every year there's a board meeting. I got elected on the nine member board. The president is John Pandazopoulos from Australia. Mm -hmm. And we have two other members from the United States, three board members, two from New Hampshire, two state representatives, Tom Katsadonis 
and Ted Rokas and myself. And what we're trying to do is, number one, is we're trying to build bridges with our homeland, with Greece, especially during this economic crisis. We can talk about all the, a lot of the political issues, but, pol but the economy is number one because it comes from the bottom of our heart. We saw what happened to Greece during World War II. We saw what happened to Greece after World War II, during the Civil War, how Greece rebuilt itself as a nation and a leader. Well, how are you, what are you doing to uh, provide help for Greece, support for Greece? We want to try to promote more U.S. companies to do business in Greece. I think that's number one. We try to also talk to the what Greek What are you government. offering the companies? Well, we try to tell them, look, relocate in Greece. It's a good opportunity right now. Greece is starting to come out of this uh, economic recession. It's starting to rebuild itself. And I think it's a good opportunity for U.S. companies to do business in Greece. And I'll give you another sidebar issue is Delta Airlines. Greece is one of the only countries that does not have nonstop service. It used to. Used to. So this is something new. Or other outside their national carrier. Well, if you don't have nonstop service throughout the year, how do you get business people right. to come to Greece to do to invest? Or to have individuals from the United States fly from New York, say, to Athens and to points beyond. It is critical. You sent the letter to Delta. Yes, with my colleagues in government, we're, what we're doing is we started an initiative with many state legislators, Senate President of Minnesota, my colleagues in government, New Hampshire, Nevada, here in New York, all four members of the delegation, is to write letters, and write a letter to the uh, Vice President of Delta and tell him we want to set up a meeting and to convince him that it is time to recontinue service. It doesn't have to be seven days a week. In the winter time from October to May, it could be twice or three times a week. At least have that initiative. And you're going to see how, why it's important. It's also important in tourism. On a recent flight that I flew from Boston to Amsterdam on Delta, connecting with KLM, I had on board in the middle of February over 35 U.S. citizens. They were traveling from the United States to catch a cruise ship in Piraeus, the Rotterdam, not to sail in the Greek islands, but the cruise ship was leaving Piraeus, stopping in Crete, through the Suez Canal to Singapore. It was a right. world cruise about 40 days. And there was that, no direct flight. No direct That's flight. That's ridiculous. Uh, you're also promoting resolutions to the division of Cyprus. It's going to be our 40th year this coming year. Uh, Rhode Island was a leader when we uh, commemorated the 30th anniversary back in uh, uh, 19... Uh, uh, 2004, and uh, I think it's time enough that all our states that have a Greek American presence to pass a resolution recognizing the fact the travesty that took place 40 years ago, those that lost their lives, the missing, and it's time to reunify Cyprus. We need a strong, clear message, not only amongst our states, but also our U.S. congressional delegation to take that message to Washington that enough's enough, that we need this year to find a resolution to reunite Cyprus. You also do something very important. You uh, want uh, everyone in uh, the, the state Senate to recognize the genocide, the Pontian genocide, the Armenian genocide, and the Greek genocide. We've been a leader on this issue, especially on the Greek Pontian genocide. We're one of the first states, along with, I believe, the state of New Jersey, of uh, several years back, to pass a resolution in the United States states to take that cause to recognize and it's not just to pass the resolution but educating non-Greeks in our state and in other states what took place that over 356,000 Greek Pontians were slaughtered by the Ottoman Empire. And 300,000 Greeks. Exactly and you had the issue with Smyrna. And the Armenians which were about a million. And the Armenian genocide. So during this week we make sure that the Greek Pontians are included with the Armenian Genocide and with the uh, Jewish Holocaust, all those three resolutions. And it's to remind folks, individuals, not only in Rhode Island, not only in the United States, but throughout the world, that genocide cannot reoccur. Absolutely. And to recognize that, that fact, because it's not uh, recognized, uh, they're doing nothing to recognize the history. Exactly. And it's like whitewashing. You cannot whitewash right. that. And we have the 100th hundredth, the hundredth, uh, anniversary of the Armenian Genocide coming up next year. Uh, when they spoke in Providence, Rhode Island last Sunday, we uh, meet at the uh, uh, Armenian uh, Cemetery in Providence. And we have a clock, and that clock is ticking down. Now it's less than one year. It's down to 349 days. 
We want to make sure by next year that Turkey recognizes today, recognize the fact what took place with the Armenian Genocide, the Greek Pontian Genocide, and those that died under the uh, Ottoman Empire between 1915 and 1922. Well, that's wonderful, uh, Senator, because it's not, uh, it's not uh, supported enough, and you're doing everything uh, to do that. And you're also part of the Alas Liberty to Greece project. What is this floating maritime museum? Let, tell me about that. It's very important. Uh, back in 2005, uh, members of the Greek government uh, had requested to find uh, a Liberty ship and also a group of Greek ship owners, Spiros Polemis from Andros, and the list goes on and on. So what happened was out of the history of the Liberty ships are very important because without the Liberty ships, the United States never would have won World War II. We were losing more ships crossing the Atlantic to support Great Britain and to have her survive the onslaught of uh, Nazi Germany until we defeated the Nazi submarine threat in the middle Atlantic. The Liberty ships were built very inexpensively in great numbers. Over 2,700 were built during World War II. And we were building more ships than the uh, Nazi submarine warfare could sink. During World War II, also, Greece's fleet of 685 were decimated. They had about 685 ships. Over two-thirds of the Greek fleet was sunk during World War II, and over 2,000 Greek merchant mariners were killed, sacrificed their lives. So after the war, and the U.S. government gave Greece about 10 liberty ships during the war, and after the war, another 100 to rebuild Greece, to rebuild the fleet. That's how Greece became a maritime power throughout the 1950s and 1960s is getting 100 liberty ships and then purchasing another 600. Not only that issue was important, but right now currently only two liberty ships are, are in service, one the John Brown in Baltimore as a museum and one the Jeremiah, Brown, uh, Jeremiah O'Brien out in San Francisco. One liberty ship that was left still uh, floating in the James River with the uh, U.S. Maritime Administration fleet, a rusting hulk. We found it, had to pass legislation through the U.S. Congress to transfer the ship to the Greek government. We started the project in 2005, 2006 to try just to get the money, raise the money. I did a PowerPoint presentation at the U.S. Embassy with then Ambassador Speckhard. Had about 25 Greek ship owners, and within 20 minutes we raised the necessary money because the money wasn't coming from the Greek government. We did not want, this was a private venue. We had the ship towed in, in Greece in 2008. It left uh, uh, the United States, Norfolk, Virginia, under tow on December 6th, which is an important holiday. I use Nikolaos, the saint of the, uh, of the mariners. It arrived in Greece in 2009, and throughout the course of 2009, over $10 million was spent. Anybody can Google it, Elas Liberty. Better than the two U.S. liberties right now that are museums. Unbelievable. And this uh, uh, ship right now is in uh, docked right next door to the Minister of Merchant Marine. My ultimate goal, I know at the end of May during Posidonia, the U.S. Maritime Administrator would be visiting Greece and honoring Greece and the United States of our bilateral relations. But my final goal is to make sure that the ship does get transferred to a private entity and to have the 2,000 names inscripted in that museum. So when a family member visits that museum, to look up on the wall and see their, grandparent, their grandfather that served during World War II, that sacrificed his life, to see that name up there. Plus, currently, we want to see young Greeks, not to become ship captains and electricians and cooks, but to become part of the, uh, the Greek maritime industry, to become it's lawyers. It's one of the largest. People don't realize that Greek maritime is, I think, the second or the third largest uh, the maritime group in the world. To work here in New York City, to work in London, to work in the offices in Piraeus. We want, and that is one of the goals, to have young Greeks to look at the maritime industry. And it is a growing industry. Right. As you just said. A lot on your agenda, Senator. Congratulations on everything you're doing. We're very proud that you're a Greek American uh, and you are a leader in uh, the United Thank States you. and in our community. Um, how can our audience get involved in any of your projects to, that you might seek support of? Well, most of the projects were done in state. We're, we're, what we're trying to do, our group, like we said earlier, is try to get other legislators throughout the country to support, to pass resolutions honoring Greek Independence Day every year to pass resolutions honoring 
the Pontian Genocide, passing resolutions to protect the freedoms of the ecumenical patriarch. That's also on our list. We're, that's another big that's issue another that we have, that we where about, Turkey right. still refuses to recognize the property of right. the uh, of Greek the Church. Orthodox Church right. and to allow the Halki Theological School to be reopened. There's a lot on our plate. The name Macedonia, the list goes on. Cyprus, the issues of the, the Aegean Sea, it, the list goes on and on. And we're building partnerships with, with Cyprus, Greece, and Israel. We're trying to also form uh, a coalition up in New England of getting Jewish American uh, legislators of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island to meet with the Council General of Israel and Council General of Greece to form bilateral positions and strengthen our bonds and ties. Well, we wish you a lot of luck, and we're all here to support. Congratulations on Thank everything you. you're doing. It's been an honor to have you here in our studios today. My pleasure.